organic uh, when it comes to food. So I'm sure that you've all seen uh, at the grocery store uh, an organic section, you've seen organic labels on food, uh, but you know, what, what does that actually mean? Um, and so all agriculture, uh, really before the 20th century, um, was organic. Um, but in the 20th century, we've developed um, a bunch of sort of modern techniques in agriculture um, that have caused different groups of people uh, concern. Um, and so these concerns that they had about the way agriculture was being done led to the development of this legal definition uh, of organic agriculture. Uh, and so in the United States, uh, what that means, uh, it's a variety of things. Um, so farmers that are certified as being organic, um, they have to use um, crop rotations uh, and different practices to ensure that they're taking care of the soil uh, on the farm to make sure that it's, it's going to be sustainable uh, over generations. Um, the big thing um, is that they can't use synthetic fertilizers, insecticides, or herbicides. Um, and so that means you can't use Roundup uh, on your organic farm. Uh, you can't use uh, synthetic pesticides. Um, so most of you have probably heard of like DDT, uh, for example. Um, so that's the famous insecticide from Rachel Carson's book, Silent Spring. Um, it's not very commonly used anymore, but that's just an example. Um, so you're not allowed to use um, anything like that. Uh, but you can use um, naturally derived uh, pesticides uh, or herbicides. So for example, uh, DT, uh, so you can apply the bacteria uh, or the DT dry proteins from the bacteria. Also, uh, cannot use genetically modified organisms. Uh, you can use crops that are bred through traditional breeding methods, like we talked about, uh, and crops that were developed uh, with mutagenesis are also uh, with no crops with genes or mutations. So, what are the costs and benefits then uh, of organic food? Um, so, this is kind of a controversial uh, issue, so there's a lot of money uh, riding on this. Um, and so, the people that run organic farms and grocery stores uh, have a lot of money riding on it. The people that are competing with them also have a lot of money riding on it. Um, but there have been a number of studies done by government organizations uh, looking at some differences between them. Um, so in terms of nutritional differences, there really aren't any uh, significant ones between organic and conventional farms. So if you have an organically grown tomato that is genetically the same as a conventionally grown tomato, uh, they're going to be pretty much the same for you uh, in terms of nutritional value. Uh, one advantage for organic, um, you're not allowed to spray pesticides on them. Uh, not surprisingly, um, they have lower levels of pesticides in them. Um, so because of that, it's important uh, really for any, particularly fruit that you buy. Uh, if it's not organic, you wash it uh, pretty clean. Um, there's been some evidence to show that organic methods um, better for soil uh, and water quality. Um, however, organic methods, uh, because they can't use herbicides like Roundup, they often depend on physically uh, destroying weeds by plowing, um, and that can lead to increased soil erosion uh, with organic methods compared to herbicide-heavy traditional methods. Uh, and then it can potentially result uh, in lower yield. But that really depends 
questions about anything else for you? I have, and you've all probably noticed <laughs> this. Uh, it's often more expensive. Um, so a, a big part of that, so part of it is who it's marketed to. So it tends to be you know marketed to people who are middle class enough who have more disposable income. Um, so price markup there. Um, there's also labor costs that are really high there. Um, so in particular for weed control with organic crops, you can't just go and spray chemicals. You either have to send somebody out with a tractor uh, to destroy the weeds or actually go out by hand uh, and remove it because it's uh, higher labor costs. Yeah. Right. So I know a lot of people who argue that um, growing So I think, again, that really depends. So in some systems, um, so I, I saw a study from Cornell that looked at various conventional organic farms in Pennsylvania uh, where they weren't having severe insect issues um, and found that they actually got similar yields. Um, and then in the organic farms, they used less chemicals uh, and less uh, used tractors less, so less uh, CO2. So in that case, the organic approach was more sustainable. Okay. Um, organic cotton, for example, um, cotton has really terrible insect problems. Um, so you take a huge yield there. Um, so organic cotton yields are half or less of GMO cotton. So that means you have to use twice as much land and water to get the same amount of cotton. So okay. that's much less sustainable. Okay. So the answer is really it depends. So when I'm thinking about food sustainability, I personally care a little bit more about whether it's local or not. Okay. Right? So you're going to be emitting much less CO2 with your crop, be it conventional or organic, you know, if it's coming from, say, Fresno uh, versus getting here on an airplane from Chile. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So another um, argument is that people would be doing things like growing So in terms of the levels that are typically found on foods, um, there's you know, some evidence for and against it being harmful for us. Um, those uh, pesticides are definitely harmful at higher levels, um, but it's not clear whether there's an effect if you consume them at very low levels for a long period of time. Uh, but they're certainly harmful at higher levels. 